What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian, A Hero's Peril Season 2 Part 2. Reading. Sun's Heir, Death's Guardian 2, A Hero's Peril by Engineer Forever. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto or Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Chapter 2 Inches Can You Tell Me How This Is My Fault Again? Percy asked in annoyance as he and Annabeth examined the abandoned ruins that they had fallen into. Yes, please tell me what I did wrong this time, the son of the sea asked his girlfriend. The blonde girl turned and fixed him with a glare, putting her hands on her hips as she did so. Ah, the lecture pose, said Percy dryly. You pushed me down here, seaweed brain, Athena's daughter accused, and instead of doing what a sane person would do in going to get help, you fell down after me. You always blame me, said Percy with a pout to his girlfriend. Out of love Percy, out of love, said Annabeth as she teased him. Hey, you're the one that told me to look over your shoulder. What else was I supposed to do? Use mirrors, defended the son of Poseidon before he looked up at the hole they fell through. Maybe we could climb back up. Wouldn't you like to know what this place is first? Annabeth asked as she turned back to the wall and ran her hand over the stone. I thought she wanted to get out. Leo asked with a blink. Nah, Annie would much rather look around. Talia teased, getting her friend to look pink-cheeked. Percy scratched the back of his head while answering, not really, no. I'd rather be back at the cabins talking to Tyson. You did that yesterday, didn't you? Annabeth asked still running her fingers over the stone before finding an engraving, what the, gods above. Geez, and she said Talia spent too much time around Naruto. Percy silently joked as he turned and looked at what she found. Carved into the stone was a thick triangle, one that he recognized as the Greek symbol of Delta. Wait, he knows it? Annabeth asked in disbelief. Hey, okay, one that he was forced to recognize after the quest for Artemis by Naruto. Percy shuddered as he tried to repress the thought of studying with Naruto. Oh now this I must hear. Athena smiled the blonde demigod had made good work on teaching Percy everything he should have already had memorized by now, and had joked that if Percy ever had an important test, Naruto would always be willing to help. Percy made sure never to tell his mother about Naruto's, miracle, teaching method. Oh it couldn't have been that bad. Nico said with a roll of his eyes. The constant writing of names to where they belonged in myth history made his hand ache at the memory. Writing it in both Greek and English. The horror, baby, was muttered by a few, getting dirty looks from Percy as he huffed and crossed his arms. That was torture, at least to him. Do you know what this is? Annabeth asked him. The raven-haired son of Poseidon looked at her with a face that said, Duh. Never seen that face before, Annabeth said in an honest tone. The symbol for Delta, he replied easily. The grey-eyed blonde gave him a look of surprise that he wasn't sure if he should have been insulted by or not. No, no, I feel insulted, said Percy as he continued pouting. Well, it's that, but more importantly it's the symbol for Daedalus, explained Annabeth as her eyes glistened in excitement. As they would, Annabeth gushed a bit, getting Percy to laugh at her somewhat in her excitement. Percy, we're inside of the labyrinth. The labyrinth, Percy repeated after a moment of thought, you mean that place that Minos had built for the Mino Ur, Pasiphae's son. Who are you and what have you done with Percy? Annabeth asked with false accusation as a smile threatened to break through her joking facade. I can be smart, said the boy in question, getting some wishy-washy hand motions from the crowd. Darn it, Percy crossed his arms and frowned at his friend. I'll have you know Annabeth Chase, that I do have a brain retorted the raven-haired teen. Damn right, Annabeth snorted and stifled a giggle, making Percy scowl at her. He turned and went back to the hole, glaring up at it while mumbling to himself about not being stupid and friends that took jokes too far sometimes. You people honestly do, the sea child said to them all. Annabeth rolled her eyes and went back to running her hands over the stone, oh, come on, Percy. You know I'm just kidding. You've been hanging out with Talia too much, Percy grumbled. Or just the right amount. Talia said with a quirked lip. Ah shut it, Percy said, grumbling about stupid cousins. As he started to check the wall for loose stones. 
Maybe if we pry one loose. The path they were in suddenly shook, causing the two teens to stumble backwards into each other. With a grunt, Percy pushed himself back to his feet before offering Annabeth a hand up. The daughter of Athena immediately went to the wall and pressed her ear against it, ignoring her friend as he caught sight of something beyond her. This, this is amazing, she quietly exclaimed. Turning to Percy, she waved him over, Percy, you have to come listen to this. It sounds like something is moving the stones. Not a something, both Percy and Annabeth stated. Uh, Annabeth, something isn't moving the stones, Percy said, pointing at the still shifting walls in front of them, the stones are moving themselves. There it is, said Percy. Wow, seriously, Leo asked Annabeth, who nodded. That's, that's so awesome. Annabeth exclaimed, her urge to examine the once lost maze rising to new levels. Sure it is, Percy said with a small smile, amused at her excitement, before grabbing the excited girl's shoulder. Come on, we have to go and tell Chiron about this. Ah, oh, but, I suppose you're right, the slightly disappointed girl sighed out. You just wanted to keep it for yourself to figure out, said Talia with a roll of her eyes. The child of wisdom flushed at the truth of it. She turned her head to the hole, did you hear that? Percy strained his ears before recalling something Naruto had taught him, Talia and the D'Angelos, the big three's kids trained well together, who knew? Who indeed, said Jason. Percy, Nico, and Talia looked at each other and shrugged, they didn't see how it was possible. Taking a deep breath and going to his center, Percy muted out the world around him. I think that is just taking a forced nap, Hazel said with a smile on her face. Naruto had taught the four children of the big three how to find their centers in case they felt like they were going to lose control of their abilities. Wait, we can do that? Nico asked with a blink, getting rounding blinks from the other big three kids. While Percy didn't know what Nico or Bianca's abilities were. Oh come, how could you not know? Nico asked as he looked to Percy. I mean, it's pretty obvious, he exclaimed while using hand gestures. Oh, forgive this lowly mortal ghost king, Percy said with a roll of his eyes as he rested his chin in his palm. He knew that if either he or Talia lost control of themselves, someone would be in a world of hurt. Currently, Percy felt like he was floating in the ocean, his body had relaxed and faintly he heard someone calling his name. It sounded a lot like, that's Grover. Percy exclaimed, cupping his mouth and shouting up the hole, down here. We're down here. Wow, that looks like a useful thing. Leo said, huh, maybe something to train for, said Jason with intrigue written on his face. Dude, always with the training. A few seconds ticked by and Grover was above them with a tall curly haired teen with a single blue eye in the center of his face standing behind him. Tyson, the dimmer than average teenage cyclops, smiled down at his half-brother, Percy. Tyson, Percy said with a smile. Good to see him in the story. Annabeth, Percy, Grover sighed in relief. Thank Pan you're both okay. I'll pull you up. How are you going to do that? It's a eight-foot drop, Percy asked, getting a look of bewilderment from Annabeth. How did you know that? The girl herself asked. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out if you don't interrupt wise girl, the boyfriend answered getting a flustered look from his girlfriend that made him smile. Rubbing the back of his neck, Percy sheepishly replied, Naruto, uh, taught me the way he learned how to measure distances. I really think this boy is a blessing for your spawn, squid god, said Athena as she teased her rival, who got grumpy at the title. The hard way, added the demigod as he recalled Naruto throwing Percy into the ocean from various heights with Blackjack's help. I hate the blonde jerk, I really do. Percy said with a perfectly straight face. Everyone else was cracking up. Percy still felt a little betrayed at the way his steed had laughed at him. No, no, I feel your pain brother. Then again, he also felt sorry for Naruto, who had tried to teach the other three. That dick, said Talia in disbelief. He was supposed to be her boyfriend, not her tormentor. Zeus was grumbling at the thought of having Hades' children in the air only for Zeus to stop him from teaching the D'Angelos with a very close meeting with a lightning bolt. There it is, Hades said in a dry tone. 
and Talia to threaten him with a pain beyond imaginable in a place no man would ever recover from if he even tried to get her on the Pegasus back. Good for her. Talia nodded sternly. Percy had to hand it to Naruto. The blonde had guts to shrug a threat like that off. Blast. Zeus silently cursed while Apollo grinned like a fool at his brave, some noted idiot son. Then again, I'm just not used to it, Percy thought as he looked up at Annabeth as she was pulled out of the labyrinth. Percy's eyes glazed over when he accidentally stared at the girl's jean-covered rear, not that he was aware of it. Perv, Talia glared at Percy, how dare he? Percy sweat a bit at the angered look he was getting, but felt his throat dry at the sly look Annabeth was giving him. So, you like that huh? was all she asked. He turned away from her, giving a fake cough, um, continue please. So the story did, he was snapped out of it when Grover said, all right, your turn, Percy. Yeah, sure, Percy mumbled, still a little dazed from the sight he just took in. I'm sure, Nico joked to him, getting Percy to scowl and playfully push him. Jumping up to grab his friend's hand. Grover and Tyson pulled the teen out of the ground. Once he was back in the small cave he had entered through, Percy smiled at his half-brother and friend, thanks guys, for coming so quickly. Quickly, Grover repeated in confusion while Tyson just beamed at his brother. Percy looked down at the hole and then around the cave, nearly having a heart attack when Annabeth's saber-tooth Washington growled at him when his gaze went over to his teammate. Trouble at home, Leo asked. I think someone's in the dog house, said Piper with a smirk. Wouldn't it be litter box? Jason asked in amusement. Ooh, good one Jay, said Talia as she grinned. Hate you, all of you, Percy grumbled. The blonde girl grinned and patted her large cat on the head. Annabeth had a quivering lip, like she still wanted her own awesome big cat. Good boy, Wash, she praised. Helping them find us. Percy's eye twitched as he watched the cat turn into a happy puppy at the side of his owner. Washington hated him. Sucks for you bro, Leo said with no sympathy. He got the same looks all around, but some were laughing quietly to themselves. Probably because of how negatively Annabeth had reacted to him stealing her hat when they had first met. Yes, very stupid of you, Annabeth scolded her boyfriend. It wasn't me and had taken to trying to trip him up whenever he wanted to hang out with Annabeth last winter. Wow, Talia blinked, Kitty Vendetta much. Like a ninja, Nico snickered out. What made it worse, Annabeth refused to believe that the cat was out to get him. Oh, Apollo drawled out. It's like one of those situations. Tough luck, wethead. She just thought that he was being mean because he was a dog person which was an ironic claim considering one of the first monsters that had tried to kill him was a hellhound and afterwards there was an incident with Chimera disguised as a chihuahua. Very ironic, Percy said in a dry tone, looking to Annabeth and asking, pleading, please don't get a cat or dog anytime soon. Annabeth just hummed cheerfully, a finger to her chin. I'll think about it, she said in a light-hearted teasing tone. It didn't ease the son of the sea at all. Percy, Grover started, snapping the teen from his one-sided staring contest with Annabeth's saber-tooth, we've been looking for you for two hours. Ah, the time issues. Annabeth said in a tired tone, that was a problem. Big time, Percy agreed. What? Annabeth and Percy questioned as one, equal amounts of surprise on their faces. They looked at each other before looking back at the concerned satyr. Grover, that can't be right. Annabeth said as she stopped lathering her cat with attention. Ah, you made the pussy sad. Ow, someone had to, though. Not you. Artemis growled at her brother with a disgusted look on her face, one that the females in the chamber shared. We were down there for maybe ten minutes at most. It was two hours, Grover said confidently. He should know. He was hypothesizing what horrible events could have happened to them while they searched. Thanks Grover said the couple dryly. Leave it to the goat man to think up stuff like that. Tyson nodded, his curly locks bobbing with his head as his single eye turned into one full of worry. Yeah, me and Grover have been to the lake, the big hill, and searched most of the forest, the cyclops added, I even got stuck in the entrance for a few minutes before Wash came and pushed me through. Well, it seems Tyson's vocabulary has gotten better. 
Annabeth said. Percy nodded to her on that one. Percy and Annabeth shared another look before the son of Poseidon came up with a hypothesis. Time moves slower, like in the Lotus Hotel. Nico shivered a bit at the mention of that place. That could be it. Annabeth said before looking to Grover, we have to tell Chiron about this. The satyr nodded in agreement, turning around and squeezing through the gap. Tyson followed with a small push from Washington, the large cat following after him. Annabeth went next, leaving Kelphie to ogle Annie's backside, again, said to Leah with a pointed look at Percy. He just flushed once more, and Percy followed after her. This was starting to look like it was going to be another one of those summers. It's always going to be one of those summers, said Percy with a pout. I never get to have a normal summer, ever since I went to summer camp. Normal is overrated, Hermes waved off. Percy didn't fully agree with him. One that could mean the end of the camp. Realizing this, his mind went back to Talia and Naruto and wondered how their mysterious quest was going. Not fun obviously. Dalia said dryly, a few hours prior, on a highway in the middle of Nevada, Naruto was pressing himself against the back of a black SUV while one of his old friends, and the term is used loosely mind you, took shots at him with a handgun, scaring the poor family within the vehicle. Asses, said Piper with a frown. The dead aren't all like that Piper, they're just, programmed that way, Hazel tried to tell her friend. Well, those ones are still jerks. He heard the skeleton step on broken glass in approach and the sound of a clip falling to the ground. This reminds me of that film you and Zeus girl watched, Helios idly commented, you know, the one with that huge muscle guy who sounds German. What was it called? Obliterator. No wait. Eliminator. Terminator hells. Come on bro, said Apollo with a smile. Leave it to Helios to say something like that. Once again, godly commentary is wonderful. Hades snickered out. You're really not helping right now, Naruto silently replied with a frown as he scanned the area before finding one of his stray arrows just a bit away from him. Pushing himself to his feet, Naruto dashed for the arrow, making the skeleton hurry after him. A car was approaching and about to merge in the other lane to avoid the gunman, consequently causing the arrow to be shattered. Nemesis is really showing her bitchy side to him, Apollo said as he frowned. Nah, this is teaching him not to slack off like a moron. Ares argued. Hum, I guess, but the sun god didn't have to like it though. Naruto pressed himself to run faster, diving for his arrow just as the car began to merge. Does, he, make it? Apollo shouted out like a sports announcer. Hiroshin, Naruto announced as soon as his fingers touched the arrowhead. The nearest point he could think of was at Talia's side, which is where he ended up landing in the car and ignoring Talia's gasp at his current state. Just another day at the office honey. Hermes smirked, getting snickers all around. Naruto panted before lifting his hand and grinning when he held the arrow within it. Slamming on the brake and tearing his seal off the accelerator with his other foot, Naruto waited until he came to a complete stop before looking at Talia. Giving her a small apologetic smile, Naruto said, be right back. Honestly, overtime at work. Apollo played along with Hermes. But I want to buy that new car. I need it, said the thieving god as the brothers broke out into laughter. Wait, but he didn't, jerk, Talia said as she huffed. Naruto once more teleported with the hood of the Peterbilt in mind. He had left that skeleton unsupervised and two humans in a wrecked SUV at its mercy. He better clean up his mess, Piper said sternly with crossed arms. That and he could hear honking horns and gunshots. Reappearing on top of the dreaded Peterbilt, Naruto pulled his bow out and prepared the arrow he had obtained. Flicking the knock, there was a brief hum before the arrowhead whirred and unfolded, turning into a blade-like arrowhead that was about two inches in width. That's deadly looking, Frank said, finally. Naruto whistled sharply, gaining the attention of the skeleton, before releasing his arrow. The skeleton's head was severed from its neck and much to his ire the monster didn't dissolve into a pile of dust. You'd think you'd give him some kind of Stygian iron for a situation like this, Poseidon spoke to his dead ruling brother. Hades shrugged, who knows. Maybe the kid never asked or the god just didn't want to give handouts. It did get hit by a swerving car, 
though, sending its bones across the interstate. Pick up sticks anyone? Leo asked with mirth. I could use a new xylophone. Apollo mused with a rub of his chin. Oh, boo, that was cliché. Hades countered to his nephew. Come to think of it, none of the other skeletons dissolved into gold dust either. With a twitching eye, Naruto grumbled and asked, what does it take to kill you guys? Us, Nico said with a grin, or Stygian iron. He supplied dutifully. Sighing, he dropped from the hood of the Peterbilt cab, grunting as he landed on the ground. He jogged over to the SUV and knocked on the driver's window, peering in before he asked, hello. Anyone home? Sorry I hit your car. Wasn't exactly my fault, but you know. At least he's polite about it, said Hestia with a small giggle as she finished reading the line. Still doesn't help we wreck though, Piper said as she pouted. That had to hurt, despite the airbags. The driver's door opened and after he stepped back, Naruto had to do a double take at who stepped out. His mouth popped open before he dropped his bow, pointing at the man in shock. Holy shit, you're your, you're Tristan McLean. He's star struck. Apollo sang out with a loony grin. Although concerned for the team's safety, Tristan couldn't fight down his amusement. Yes, are you Alry? Oh shit, Naruto said as his eyes widened and his hands went to his head. I just hit Tristan McLean's SUV. His fan base is going to kill me. He does have a good point. Piper giggled. Okay, this was a somewhat hilarious way to enter the story. I'm just saying that he's starting to drive me up the walls, a displeased Talia said as she sat in the car with her arms crossed, glaring at the empty driver's seat. Around her left wrist was Q in his bracelet mode. Couples consoling already, Aphrodite asked in amusement, with a demon bracelet of all things, the goddess asked further with snickers coming from all around. Oh shut it, Talia pouted. Since she lacked the ability to lend him chakra, he couldn't materialize in his spiritual form. And now he was stuck listening to his partner's chosen mate. No one says that anymore. It's girlfriend. Talia protested with pink cheeks. Everyone rolled their eyes at how fast she defended that one. Someone seemed to be getting into the story, a bit too personally perhaps. Or girlfriend as the kid insisted, complain about the kid's suicidal, stupid plans. More like crazy with a splash of awesome. Apollo argued strongly. No, if he gets it from you, it's stupid. Artemis attested, getting a whining pout from her archery brother. Wow, you're slow on the uptake, Q commented, even the demon is getting annoyed, said Hera with a grin, getting her stepdaughter to scowl at her comment. Getting a glare from the daughter of Zeus, damn right, Talia added her own glare. It's a curse of the Uzumaki to be as crazy as possible when in battle. Of course you would have a lover like that, said Artemis with a sigh. I just know how to pick him, said Apollo with a smirk. A pregnant Mito, the kit's great-grand cousin or something, once dove headfirst into battle when she heard her beloved husband had been scratched by a kanai. I am loving this woman, Aphrodite smiled widely. Now that was love. While she was pregnant, Artemis asked with a frown. All in the name of love Artemis, the love goddess stated, getting the goddess of maidens to scowl at her. That could have risked the child greatly. And let's not forget the kid's mother. Talk about a nut job, now she's a woman I would rather be allied with than against. What was his mom like? Talia asked, fishing for information her secretive boyfriend refused to share. Why? Jason asked, want info before you meet her? He asked with a small smirk. Talia pushed him, hard. Stuff it, superboy, she answered with pink cheeks. Whenever she asked him about it, he would smile and say that she would eventually find out. Not ominous, whatsoever, Piper said with a chuckle. Agreed, Hazel nodded, grinning a bit. What irked her even more was that she had asked it in front of the D'Angelos and Percy, both of who were given knowing looks from her blonde boyfriend, which meant that they knew something she didn't. And so the jealousy sets in, Annabeth giggled. Oh, no you don't, Q chastised with an audible frown in his voice. The kid will tell you about Kashina in due time, all I will say is that he got his stupid suicidal plans and most of his personality from her. See, see, Apollo pointed, right there in fine print. He grinned to his sister, he gets it from his mother. Still, you decided to have a child with her, 
so it is partly your fault. The moon goddess countered. Talia frowned, trying to think of what Naruto's mother looked like. She had to be beautiful, Apollo wouldn't have had a child with someone even if he was amnesiac who wasn't. You are amazingly vain like that, Artemis quipped with a frown, getting a sheepish look from her sun god brother. Let alone marry them, wait I married her, Apollo asked with an owlish blink. Apollo got married, asked his siblings in disbelief. Was it the end of the world? Hera looked at Naruto in a whole new light now. This was certainly an interesting development. And even that had to mean she was beautiful. Aphrodite huffed a bit, still remembering the picture. Oh, why couldn't that one be hers, or even a legacy? Was that so much to ask for? She beamed at the thought of Naruto being a legacy through his mother. From what she could get out of the spirit within her boyfriend's weapon, she was feisty and bad at planning in the long term, coming up with crazy battle plans on the fly. Sounds like someone I know, Annabeth grinned at Percy, who flushed a little at the comparison. The raven-haired punk of a demigoddess growled and closed her eyes in frustration. Ah, I'm so sick of thinking about Whiskers' past, Talia grumbled to herself. Q chuckled and she shifted a glare down to the gleaming red ruby on her wrist. Great, I'm being mocked by jewelry. Aphrodite just smiled at that one. A black slit appeared across the gem, looking up at her almost gleefully. Then perhaps you should stop thinking about it and just beat the answers out of him, Q suggested. I am liking that demon bracelet a lot right now, Talia said with mild glee. Of course you would, her friends quipped dryly in stereo. Talia's mouth curled up in a smile as she replied, that is tempting. Before Q could say another thing on the subject, her door had been pulled open and Naruto peered in. Unbuckled, Talia was free to jump out of her seat, throwing her arms around his neck and hugging him. Ah, the girls cooed at Talia, who just pouted at their stupid running joke. Little brats. Naruto grinned as he hugged the girl back standing upright as he did so and consequently pulling her out of the challenger as he did so. Putting Talia back on the ground, the girl immediately punched him in the arm. Ah, there's the Talia we know and love, Percy smiled. You're a god's damned lunatic, scolded the girl, you just had to go and do something crazy like jump out of the car while it was still moving. In case you haven't noticed whiskers, I can't drive. Yet, hopefully, Talia added with a pout. She could never be taken seriously behind the wheel now. Sorry, sorry, apologized the blonde teen as he rubbed his arm. He then gestured to his right and her left, to the father and daughter he had pulled from their wrecked car, and continued, to Leah Grace, meet Tristan and Piper McLean. And so the sister-in-laws met, Leo narrated, getting the couple to blush and to Leah to give Piper a mock stern look. To Leah gaped as she stared at the heartthrob movie star, a faint blush coming over her cheeks before shaking herself out of her daze and looking at the girl next to him. Oh ho, Aphrodite cried out, turning to Talia she asked, window shopping I see, not that I blame you of course. Lady Artemis, Talia whined out childishly, there, there Talia, her matron goddess spoke and glared at the love goddess, enough, this is getting old. Oh it never does, furrowing her brows, she looked at Naruto questionably. The blonde had a grim smile on his face and nodded, making her cover her eyes before asking, do they know? Not, exactly, sheepishly admitted the blonde, turning his girlfriend around and whispering into her ear, told them that we're secret agents. Oh like we would believe that, Piper scoffed. Tristan seemed to buy it a little too eagerly. Piper deflated, wheel, no way I would, she argued weakly. Don't think he's the spiritual type so let's just keep our real purpose out here on the down low. Wow, he got a good read on him fast, Leo said to Piper, who nodded in return. A secret agent, that's the best you could come up with. Talia hissed, slapping him in the arm once more. It sounds interesting enough, Hazel said. Naruto winced and rubbed his arm. That was going to bruise if she kept hitting him in the same spot. Oh grow up and heal son boy. Talia said with a roll of her blue eyes. Dad's the god of truths and I'm the reincarnation of the god of oaths. I don't lie well. That's nice to know, the hunter said with a cat-like smile. Uh oh, poor Naruto. Percy said, pitying the blonde. 
The only time I do is when I leave things out and it's really obvious when I do that, he admitted before realizing his slip and the slight widening of eyes Talia gave him. Her eyes narrowed and a brief flicker of lightning danced across them that made Naruto's Adam's apple bounce as he swallowed. He done goofed, Nico said with a dull look. Poor guy, they hardly knew thee. We're having a long talk after we get to wherever we're going, Talia snapped aloud before smiling at the father and daughter, so, uh, hi. Not awkward at all, Hazel muttered. Hello Talia, Tristan greeted with a smile and a nod that would melt hearts. Um, it certainly does, the Lady of Doves smiled. Thanks for letting us hitch a ride with you. Talia sent another look to her boyfriend. Naruto sheepishly laughed, I kind of. Dot hit and wrecked their car. A long talk, Talia reiterated, making Naruto nervously chuckle. And there came the whole group whipping noise. The boyfriends and husbands sighed, life was tough, it really was. She looked back to the movie star and his daughter before sighing, all right, let me move my bag first. Once everyone was situated, Naruto slid his seat back in front of Talia, who gave him another glare. He gave her an apologetic glance, but he and Tristan were too tall to comfortably sit in the back of the sports car. Talia got some looks and she flustered a bit. What? I really like shotgun, she said in defense of herself. Tristan looked at the rear window and his eyes widened when he realized it was shattered. You weren't kidding when you said it was a dangerous job, Tristan mumbled before looking at Piper, you all set, pipes. Oh, he didn't, the child of love bemoaned and covered her face with her hands. Da ad, Piper groaned in embarrassment as the handsome blonde. Ooh, watch out Jay, Piper here may be smitten with your sister's boyfriend if you don't run into her soon, Leo teased the two. Piper frowned with crossed arms. Not funny, Leo, she huffed. Or she may just have a thing for blonde hair and blue-eyed guys. The child of the forge added, getting swatted on the shoulder. And his equally beautiful partner laughed at her nickname. Ah, thanks for the compliment, Pipes, Talia grinned to her brother's girlfriend, who just blushed a little bit. Tristan smiled and sat forward before looking at the blonde driver. So what brings two secret agents? Teenage ones at that, to Nevada's highway, he asked. Naruto grinned back at him, secret mission, what else? Duh, Mr. D drawled out, silly mortal. Of course, the movie star chuckled out. The radio blared to life as the tires squealed, which was quickly turned down by the blonde driver. He smiled apologetically to the amused Tristan, who waved it off. The four sat in silence, save for the Yuzid's pretty handsome awkward playing in the background. Perfect song for the this setting, Apollo chuckled out along with Hermes. Before Piper, a little curious asked, So, Dot how old are you, Naruto? Why, want a date, shut up Leo, Piper frowned at her friend, who just laughed at her anyway. Talia arched a brow and a smirk tugged at her lips when the blonde easily replied, Seventeen. Seventeen, and you work for the government? Piper asked with her brow furrowed. Dig it deeper. Please, Piper said in a smug tone. Naruto groaned inwardly while Talia's smirk became more prominent. The girl was smart, hopefully she was another Annabeth. We hoped, Annabeth stated to her friend who giggled at her wanting to be a child of wisdom at her first knowledge of her demigodhood. But still, Piper was far more down to earth than the rest of her siblings. Yes, Naruto said uncomfortably, shifting in his seat. A strange feeling was coming over him. A lot like when that girl drew, oh dear gods no. Wow, charm speaking him for info, nice piper, Talia complimented on, getting a thank you from the love child. So, he knows who you are, the love goddess stated with a wink, seems you may be going to see your own boyfriend soon, she teased, getting her daughter to smile brightly at the thought of meeting Jason in a more, well, proper way. Not that she regretted the way the met now of course. Taking a deep breath. Naruto quickly started to expel chakra through his body in quick pulses. The last thing he needed was for this apparent daughter of Aphrodite to charm speak him into telling her every single one of his dirty little secrets. Yes, because that would be so bad, Talia stated with a roll of her eyes. Yeah Piper, stop trying to ruin the plot. Apollo mock whined to the girl. Piper just huffed, 
It wasn't like she was trying to ruin the story so soon. Last thing he needed to do was tell his girlfriend about that time in tea country. Talia did not like the thought of what happened in tea country. Aphrodite and Apollo, however, were frowning at the lack of information, both of them along with the other Olympians were curious. Okay, Piper replied, unconvinced, so where are you going? California, Naruto replied, it was a reasonable destination considering where they were and who they were with. Why? Piper asked, the love goddess giggled a bit at her daughter, ah, the ever-annoying question of that three-letter word. Naruto behind him briefly to look at the girl before looking forward once again, merging around another car. Trying to get a cover job, he answered, trying at least to stick with his first lie. Smart, but he hasn't faced a persistent little pre-teen before I bet when it comes to questioning. Hermes stated, what as? pressed the young and unaware demigoddess. Talia's smirk had turned into a full-out grin and she was trying oh so hard not to laugh as her boyfriend's shoulders tensed. You like watching him squirm, Percy pointed out. I do. Percy turned to his girlfriend, please don't end up like that. He pleaded. Hey. Talia cried out, that is right here, she growled, but Percy ignored her. Something he would pay for down the line. I'll think about it seaweed brain. A sign of his annoyance at the way the curious girl was trying to pick apart his earlier statements. An actor, Naruto answered, his left hand gripping the wheel tight enough that he was cracking the plastic underneath the leather cover. Wow, poke the bear, Hazel said to the child of love, who in turn just shrugged it off. She was a curious child. Thankfully his rescue came in the form of the girl's father. Ah, Piper whined, her dad was taking away her fun. An actor, that's not going to be an easy cover you know, Tristan replied, before adding, unless you have the right connections. Well, a little prayer here or there could help, the god of arts mused. Huh, what a shame, Talia added in obviously false disappointment. And he doesn't have any of those. Wow, you are trying to mess with him, Jason said to his sister who shrugged in return. Serves him right with all the stunts he's already put my other through. Yes, it is a shame, Naruto said through gritted teeth, looking at the mirror and meeting his amused girlfriend's eyes. He should have known that she'd be against him in this. This had to be payback for his, game, of chicken earlier. See, Talia said in a haughty tone. I could help if you like, Tristan added, nearly making Naruto lose control as his surprising statement made the blonde choke on air. All right, I can see where this is going, Apollo grinned. My kid, the rising star, he said in a dramatic tone, holding his hands out like a camera, imagining names on movie posters with a wide grin. Don't get ahead of yourself, Artemis snorted. Ah come on sis, it is so going to happen. And with how much he takes after yours truly, well, how could he not become an amazing actor? The god of the sun asked with a hand over his chest. More like a ham, Hephaestus stated with a roll of his eyes. You could. Both Talia and Naruto questioned in equal amounts of shock. The blockbuster star nodded. Sure, why not? Tristan said with a shrug, be nice to have a friend in the business. And there's this script I was sent from a friend of mine, and they're looking for a blonde teenager like yourself. The working title is Theseus. Dionysus growled somewhat and Percy started to squirm a bit, but Poseidon just gave his nephew a look while looking proud to have a movie about his son. Theseus, Naruto repeated as his brows furrowed, like the son of Poseidon, Theseus. That's exactly right, Tristan confirmed with a nod, ignoring the, what the fuck, look Talia had donned. Seriously, how does that just happen, asked the hunter. Fates, was Annabeth's response, somewhat unsure. Of course it would be. The actor continued, they wanted me to play the villain, King Minos. Good for him. Nico said in a bland tone, while Piper looked intrigued that her father would have a villain role. And I said I would if they could find the guy they were looking for. What's the story? Another ancient Greek remake? Naruto asked. Tristan shook his head. No, they wanted to go another route. The movie star replied as the girls in the back listened to him. A modernization of the story with a happy ending for Theseus and Phaedra, who is replacing Ariadne. The god of madness snarled now. Yeah, he was not liking this. 
Theseus in general was bad enough. At least they are removing his wife from the equation. Take the job, Helios ordered, happy ending for the win. How do you even know what that is? Naruto asked internally while Tristan went into the details of the story. An alternate futuristic utopia ruled by the tyrannical king, Minos, who had a monster and a prison that acted as though it was alive. A young fisherman, Theseus. A position Poseidon seemed to approve of. Hmm, maybe he should get Percy involved in that. Would be sent along with eleven others to the prison and would have to survive traps as well as evade the monster. The demigods nodded, it sounded interesting so far. There was a side love story that made Talia's jaw clench. Ah, someone doesn't like to share, said Annabeth as she teased the hunter. How would you like Percy having some actress all over him? Talia asked back, getting Annabeth to zip her lips. I thought so. Eventually there would be a face-off between the Minotaur and Theseus and by that time, Naruto was sold. All right, so where are auditions taking place? He asked, not aware of the way Talia was glaring at him. Jerk, at least ask me first, said the hunter as she pouted, crossing her arms in annoyance. Before what she said caught up to her, and blushed a bit. Well, they're still in development but you could drop us off at the producer's office, Tristan said, Mr. Liar. Oh, we know who this is, Artemis groaned, palming her face. Hermes snickered, turning to his brother he asked, really? That's your cover name. What? It sounds simple and still holds flair to it. Apollo argued. Who's the head of the production company? Is a pretty nice guy and actually kicked off my acting career after his brother's wife saw my photo on his desk. Piper turned to her mother in surprise. Did you really? She trailed off. The goddess of love winked at her daughter. I knew he had it in him. Apollo seemed to agree, too. Piper gained a soft smile as she turned back to the story. Really? What's the production company? Naruto inquired curiously. Tristan looked to the west with a small smile on his face before he said two words that made Naruto and Talia groan, Sunrise Films. Even more tasteless, Artemis stated with a look towards her brother, to appease your ego, she mocked a bit. Oh yeah, he grinned back, and it seems I'll be making a cameo, who da god? Not you was the resounding answer from the other gods, getting Apollo's shoulders to slump. Jerks. Around the time Grover, Tyson and Washington were pulling Percy and Annabeth out of the labyrinth, Naruto was internally groaning as he drove into the parking lot for San Francisco's Sunrise Films production company. Piper had managed to call him out on his secret agent lie, much to Talia's amusement, and so he was forced to tell another half lie. Nice, said Piper, a grin on her face. You go girl, show him how vicious a pre-teen is, said Leo through his snickers, getting laughs from the demigods. He had no idea what the scarred men had wanted from them, which was true, he wasn't sure if they were sent to kill them or capture them and he got his strength and agility from his summer camp. A very good summer camp, the kids chirped, well the Greeks plus one Roman did anyway. Not government facilities, Tristan, who was just playing along with the blonde for the sake of his daughter said he had no hard feelings about it so long as the blonde agreed to meet with the producer for the film. He's laid back like that, said Piper as she smiled brightly. Both Naruto and Talia reluctantly complied with the request, leading them to the present. Getting out of his car with a sigh, Naruto wondered where he had gone wrong on the quest to end up outside one of his dad's domain doorsteps. Maybe he should have used those traps that the Hephaestus cabin had built into his car. Yes, said Leo, yes, you should have. It would have been so epic. No, that was a stupid idea, both the wheel spikes and the oil slick could have caused a huge accident that would have attracted a lot of unwanted attention. So that's a no Leo, said Jason with a small smile. Still would have been cool, the mechanic said, his argument weak. The SOL engine was a no-go because it wasn't fully tested. The last thing he needed to do was accidentally blow himself and his girlfriend up. I would really not like that, Talia said, her arms crossed over her chest and a small smirk on her face. He was pretty sure that Talia wouldn't love him anymore if he did that. There it is, said Talia as she nodded in agreement. Shifting his driver's seat forward, Naruto stepped back to let Talia out. The ravenette stretched her arms above her head, 
her back releasing a few soft pops as it loosened up from sitting in the back. Talia lowered her arms with a sigh before looking at the smiling blonde. With a smirk on her face, she poked him in the chest, next time, you're sitting in the back with the kid. Ah, no sister-in-law bonding time, Annabeth asked, teasing the two, getting a pink look from Piper and a mild glare of annoyance from Talia. Oh am I really? Naruto asked teasingly before raising his keys up to dangle in front of her, which of us is licensed to drive again? Burn. Oh shut it, hothead, Talia grumbled at Leo's comment. Which of us could care less? Talia retorted. Zing, Talia said, a small smirk on her face. Making a grab for her boyfriend's car keys. Naruto quickly retracted the keys and put them in his pocket, smirking as she gave him a mock pout. Patting the rabbinet on the cheek, Naruto gave her another fox-like grin and winked. Just a few more practice sessions with Chiron, babe, then you can drive to your heart's content. Yeah, Talia, wait for the permit, no need to ruin his ride, like mine, Apollo said mockingly, getting the Sky Daughter to bristle at the moment of crashing the embodiment of the sun. Don't call me babe, Talia grumbled with distaste as she swatted his hand away. Damn right, Blondie, the hunter scowled at the name. Naruto merely laughed and went to the trunk to get the McLean's stuff out of his car. The movie star in question was waiting right there with a small amused smile at their interactions, his daughter giggling. See, your inner drama was always there, the love goddess said as she teased her tomboy daughter, getting pink cheeks from said child. Naruto gave her a half smile and winked before ruffling her hair, getting an annoyed growl from the shorter and younger girl that made him chuckle. Oh, it seems someone is going to love to annoy you, Hazel said. Joy, Piper said dryly. It was just what she needed, a hot older guy to tease her for his chuckles. It was the small annoyances he could provide that made him feel alive. Jerk. The charm speaker pouted. Once he had retrieved the three bags from his trunk and gave them out to the respective owners, Naruto and Talia then followed Tristan into the building and went up the elevator to the top of the building to the 27th floor. The hallways were rather expensive in design, not to mention flashy like the god who apparently ran the company. Typical, Artemis said with a roll of her eyes. Hey, I got to do business in style. Her brother assured most sternly, but that carefree smile on his face didn't help his argument. As they walked past a wall of employee photos, Tristan paused and looked at the moderately larger image in the center. He looked from the photo to Naruto and then back before scratching his head, well, that's interesting. Ha, huh, looks like his cover is blown again all thanks to Sunspot, Ares snickered. What is? Piper asked before following her father's gaze and looking back at the blonde teen following them. She repeated this several times before furrowing her brows and asking Naruto, I thought you said you didn't have any connections in the business. Busted. Nico laughed along with the others. I don't. Naruto replied as he stared at the picture before he clapped a hand over his eyes and sighed. I hate him sometimes. I truly truly do. No you don't, you love me. I mean, who couldn't? He asked the group, getting quiet blinks. Apollo folded his arms over his chest and pouted. You guys suck, seriously. Do you know liar? Tristan asked curiously, a relative. You bet that dimpled smile he is, Tristan, Apollo said as he laughed. Talia, who was smirking at the whole exchange, gave her boyfriend a grin that made him want to cry. Of course she would have a grin like that, the son of the sea said dryly, looking at his cousin in question. It was her mischievous grin, one that she had gotten during their few months as a couple. Looks like someone's rubbing off on you, said Apollo with a wink to his hunting half-sister. Talia smirked back at him. She could get behind that. It showed up every now and again when he would tease one of his siblings, usually Lee and his girlfriend Katie Gardner but sometimes it would show up when the moment was against him. This happened to be one of those times. Sad for you bro, Leo said with little sympathy. It's his father actually, the daughter of Zeus said as Naruto hung his head. He really hated admitting that he was related to one of the most notorious womanizers in the universe, sometimes anyway. Apollo sputtered at that, Pops is the one with the number one title, he objected quickly, getting his father to glare at him. You'd be surprised when that sort of information would come in handy, 
not that you'd ever want to need it. Naruto was sure if his late sensei or Kakashi ever found out about some of the things his father had taught him, he'd be doomed to a life of pestering from perverts. The women turned to Apollo, disgust in their features as the sun god started to sweat a bit. So what if he taught his kid some awesome things for the bedroom? Other Talia should be thankful when that time came. His mother, on the other hand, would probably try to find a way to slaughter a god out of sheer feminine fury or motherly rage. Loving this woman, I truly am, Hera said with a nod of respect along with the other goddesses. Not something he wanted to happen, and also something he really wanted to try and prevent. Hence, why he kept that sort of information secret. For now, wait till you two hook up. Apollo teased the hunter who blanched at the thought with a bright red face. Artemis punched her brother in the arm for that, getting a yelp of pain from the god of the arts. Really? Piper exclaimed as she stared at the amused older girl and the depressed blonde standing next to her. Honest to gods, that's Whisker's dad, Talia commented before jokingly commenting. Maybe in another life I'd have hooked up with him, instead. Well, you did call him hot, Percy said as he snickered at the flushed hunter who was disgusted by the idea of hooking up with a god. Not a positive relationship. You're hilarious, dryly commented Naruto while his mirthful girlfriend snickered. He sighed and looked at the McLean family's questioning eyes, or rather, distrustful in Piper's case. Like I said, sharpest one I have, said Aphrodite as she smiled proudly. More like the only one, said Athena. Her mocking tone got a pretty glare from her fellow goddess. He and my mom are separated in a way. They're married though, Hera pointed out, unless she divorced him. I could see it happening. You're hilarious, Apollo said with a roll of his eyes as he mockingly clapped his hands. I took mom's name to stay out of the spotlight. And where did Naruto come from? Piper asked. It was then Naruto's turn to grin mischievously something that Talia took notice of and caused her own smirk to widen slightly. Wow, open that can of worms Piper, Hazel said with a mirthful shake of her head. Piper groaned at the phrasing of her question. Well, I'd have thought either your dad or your school would have taught you this already, but since it's come to this I guess I have to step forward. Don't you dare, Piper said, her face red with embarrassment. You see, Piper, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much they decide to have a baby. So first mommy and daddy take all their clothes off and then climb into bed. Though they could also climb into a car, onto a table, sit on a chair, Naruto's rather humorous answer was cut off by a red-faced piper. Oh, he got you good on that one, Leo said as he snickered with Nico. Shut up, the love child said while she fumed and crossed her arms angrily. Jason was smiling a bit, thinking it was cute. I know that, the girl exclaimed with a blush while her father laughed along with Talia. Traitor, Piper pouted at her father laughing at her other. Huffing, the embarrassed 13-year-old rephrased her question. Is your name really Naruto? Do you think I would choose a name like that willingly? The blonde retorted with an arched brow. Her argument now invalid from the point he gave. Piper gave a little snort before turning away from the now smirking blonde. Jerk. Feel my pain, Piper, said Percy. Naruto shook his head, smile still in place, before looking at Talia with a grin. The raven-haired girl nodded back, a silent agreement coming between them. We're almost at Liar's office, Tristan said once his daughter had considerably calmed down. I'm sure that the two of you have to find a place to stay so we should get this all done now. Well, they kinda have a place to go, Jason said, really wanting to see the meeting of his other and other sister. Let's just get it over with, Naruto agreed with a sigh before once again following the McLean family through the hall with Talia at his side. Piper had gone silent, but still sent the occasional glance over her shoulder at them, her eyes changing to match both Talia's and Naruto's unique shades whenever she met the opposite's gaze. Ah, the Lady of Doves cooed. That's how you know they like each other. She smiled proudly at Piper, who flushed a little at the unique shades for her eyes, especially since one was the same as Jason's. Finally, after a walk through the ridiculously long hallway, and passing several paintings, statues and murals of a certain deity. Vain, Artemis said, mocking her brother in return for his teasing. Oh please, 
If you bothered to stay stationary you'd have a place like that, too. Her twin said with a smug smile. They arrived at a very expensive looking door. It gleamed as though made of gold and the logo of the company was on it. As Tristan's hand lifted to knock, the door was pulled open and a familiar face to the two older demigods beamed from the other side of the room. Apollo had ditched the Kanahan uniform, but still kept the face of Minato Namikaze. Now he was wearing a dark blue blazer with a white V-neck shirt underneath, and slacks that matched it. Hanging from his neck by a golden chain was a gold medallion engraved with a sun that looked almost Greek on design, but wasn't. Oh no, said Apollo. He groaned at the sight of his less than fun side. Artemis scowled and crossed her arms. Wonderful. Upon noticing the slight difference in the sun's design, Naruto stiffened slightly before looking to the sun god's eyes and inwardly moaning in dismay. Rather than the warm ocean they usually were, two almost frosty blue orbs stared back at him. Finally seeing a Roman god, nice. Hazel said, trust me, not nice. Apollo said to her, Tristan McLean, I haven't seen you in ages. What brings you here? Apollo asked after briefly glancing at the two following him. The actor smiled and offered a hand, which was taken by the disguised god with a grin. Just here to tell you that I think I found the right person for Theseus' role, Tristan said. The wine god was grumbling a bit, glaring at Apollo for making a movie about that sea brat. Apollo on the other hand was contemplating on making one. Before gesturing behind him, and was I surprised when I found out you already knew him? Were you? Apollo asked as his smile strained slightly before relaxing as he reclaimed his hand. He turned to the side and gestured into the office. Come in and give me a minute. I was just on my way out to check on something. Totally saw them coming, said Apollo with a grin. A jerk he was, but his Roman counterpart was also a good prophet. The McLean family entered and Talia cautiously followed them before turning to her boyfriend, who had yet to make a move. He glanced at her and nodded before returning his attention to Apollo, prompting Talia to enter the office. Apollo stepped out and shut the door behind him before facing his son. Naruto, the unnaturally calm god greeted with a nod. A calm Apollo is a scary Apollo, Hermes said with pursed lips, getting nods all around besides from the god himself. Phoebus, Naruto greeted as his eyes narrowed slightly. Ooh, Apollo winced. At the demigod's confused glances, Apollo elaborated. He hates that name. He really didn't like the Roman side of his father sometimes. Apollo wasn't much of a warmonger, but he did become more business-oriented and serious when he became Phoebus Apollo as Naruto dubbed this personality, not to mention having his ego inflate tenfold. Is that even possible? Talia asked her matron, who nodded with sad annoyance. Not my fault, said the god in question. When he had first met Phoebus Apollo, the two had not gotten along well. Mostly because Naruto, as a Greek descendant, was a bit laid back in comparison when it came to just about everything. Yes, and we know how anal our Roman selves are. Ares grunted, getting some bland looks from the Roman demigods. Apollo, corrected the god with a frown, my name is still Apollo. You're Roman, Naruto commented as his arms crossed, and you know that some called you Phoebus to differentiate your personas. I'm sure I could convince Diana to call you that if we ever crossed paths. Well, my other seems to like him, it is possible, Artemis said with a grin to her brother, who blanched at the very thought. Smartass brat, grumbled the Roman aspect of Apollo with a scowl, why are you and Talia here? Why else, I have a quest that so happened to bring me to your doorstep, the shorter blonde said before frowning, and what's wrong with Talia Chan being here? She's my girlfriend, and she insisted on coming, but that's not the point. I smell tension. Aphrodite smiled viciously. Whoa, wait a damn second here, the Roman sun god said with a hand raised. He looked back over his shoulder through the glass window to his right at the girl in question before looking back at the teen, you're still with her. What's that supposed to mean? Talia asked, turning a glare at the Greek aspect of the current god on the scene. Hey, hey, Apollo said with his hands raised, whatever he says isn't on my neck, my Roman self is a dick and a half. Talia still didn't like where this was going. So what if I am? Naruto asked, already dreading how this conversation was going. What are you doing, kid? 
Apollo asked him before knocking a few times on his slightly shorter son's head. Hello, you have a goddess waiting for you. Literally. Hecate, hum, Hera said with a small smile at that, taking a side glance at Talia. True, this demigod could do better. After a moment of gaping at his Roman father, Naruto asked, are you talking about Hecate? I'm talking about trivia, yes, Apollo said before grinning suggestively. I don't like that grin. Talia grumbled, not liking this chapter at all now. I feel the same Talia, trust me, said Artemis as she frowned along with her lieutenant. There's the perks that come with being with her, the sex. Pig, Artemis sneered toward the Roman god. The free loving, the occasional affair to liven up the bedroom. Harris scowled in disgust along with her stepdaughter. She honestly felt sorry for the boy if he had to deal with this. And then there's the whole immortality thing that comes along with it. Huh, now that would be interesting. Ares said, his other would love that, he bet, fighting a kid like that any time. Awesome. I sometimes am ashamed of you, admitted the teen, getting a scowl from his father, before he scowled back and replied. And I'm not leaving Talia Chan just because there's a goddess who wants to jump me. At least he's committed to a relationship, Demeter said. Some demigods would jump at that chance. Only the idiots jump to things like that without thinking, like my rancher of a kid, said Ares. He chuckled darkly, moron. I'm just saying there's more fish out there, the Roman god said. A goddess is just the most beneficial. There's that little Bologna girl, what was her name? Really trying to set up a little girl with a man. Aphrodite huffed, she mulled it over in her head before nodding with a small smile. I can go with that if it adds some drama. Of course you would, Artemis shook her head disbelief. Ray chan is way too young for me, Naruto argued before adding, physically anyway. She is, uh, very mentally mature, Jason said, getting a questioning raised brow from his girlfriend, I'm just being honest. Piper just huffed at that, turning back to the story. Says the 22-year-old dating a 16-year-old, countered the god with a smirk. Hey, technically I'm 19, the hunter argued with a pout. Yeah, but you still came back as a 15-year-old, the god of prophecy countered playfully, getting a scowl from Talia. At Naruto's growl he continued, well if you're going to be so picky why not go after Cyrene? Who? Asked everyone. Cyrene is like my great 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 grandniece, exclaimed the blonde before being shushed by Apollo. Only you, Artemis said in distaste, only you would offer up one of your legacies to your son. Hey, back in the day it was a common thing, who looked over his shoulder at the waiting group of three with a reassuring wave and smile as they looked at him curiously. Turning back to Naruto, Apollo began to lead the blonde away on a walk down the hall. Just taking a father-son stroll, said Hermes with a smirk. Reminds me of Poseidon and Percy before the Titanomachi, always slipping aside to have little chit-chats. The god and child of the sea both grinned slightly. The funny thing about those cabins is technically, none of those kids are related, Apollo explained to his son. Unless they have the same mortal parent. Oh, that is just a twisted idea to put into our heads. Percy said as he blanched along with the rest of the demigods. Well, it is true and it has happened before, Aphrodite said as she shrugged. We share the same godly parents, Naruto growled, we are brothers and sisters. Of course you are, Apollo sarcastically said, every child in the cabin of Mercury, I'm sorry, Hermes, has the same father. Ouch, sting much, Hermes said with a frown to his brother. Like I said, a total dick and a half. That's different, Naruto snapped, brushing the arm off his shoulders and glaring at the Roman, look, I know that you gods supposedly don't have DNA, but you're made up of something that makes you Apollo and not another mini Zeus or Jupiter or whatever. All of us kids, even the Romans, have that something within us. Cabins don't just represent the parents, they represent our family tree, our family bonds. Ah, said Hestia after reading that passage. She smiled at that it was such a sweet thing to say. Now you sound like Vesta, Apollo snorted out before continuing tiredly. And Apollo just ruined that sweet feeling, Hestia frowned. The point is that you could have someone you deserve. You're more than a demigod, 
you are just shy of joining the ranks of immortals. Talia's hackles rose at that. Someone he deserved. What? She was suddenly undeserving. Her feminine pride, hunter or not, took a tiny blow to that. Not if it means leaving behind one of the first friends I made in this world, that you brought me to without asking, by the way. Naruto growled with an accusing finger to his father. Talia had a ghosting smile on her face, her other was lucky to have a guy like this. She really was. The hunter wondered what that slight pang of jealousy came from. She was happy like this, right? Not to mention that you're suggesting the girl I like, maybe even truly love, is someone I shouldn't be with. He said it. Aphrodite squealed. Oh, the love story is coming to fruition. She clapped excitedly with her sudden fit of giddy giggles. Talia and everyone else closed their hands over their ears at the outburst, but the hunter in question did have a blush on her face. She's beneath you, Apollo argued. What? The hunter shouted in rage with static blue arcs around her. Jason also had a sparking look in his eye. God or not, that was the wrong thing to say. She's Jupiter's daughter, protested the teen. Well, not really, Hazel pointed out softly. She is Greek. Apollo hissed as his eyes narrowed. And there it is, Athena said coldly, glaring at the Roman god. A Greek. You would rather have a Greek than a Roman or a goddess. Oh, that's his problem, Hades said. His eyes rolled. He wants to set him up with a Roman or a goddess. Probably to mess with his Greek half. I could see that, yeah, said the Greek half with narrowed eyes. You're talking to your Greek son. Naruto pointed out through gritted teeth. Yes, you'd think he would be a bit more testy around him. Zeus mused in interest. You are the reincarnation of a god, said the Roman Apollo before clasping his hands onto the teen's shoulders. So with that, he sees that the boy is beyond the title of Greek or Roman. Poseidon stated with narrow-eyed thought look on his face. His appearance turned gold for a brief moment, before revealing the debatably warmer side of Apollo, the Greek aspect. His attire had changed to the tank top and jeans combo, Naruto, I forced you to take a burden you should have never bared. You deserve the best in return for what you've done so far, that's all I'm trying to say. I just want the best for you. There I am, hi me. Apollo waved obnoxiously to his other self. Rather kind of you to say that, his sister said, Clearly she felt the Greek part of her brother was better for her nephew, despite his behavior. Far better than that Roman asshole. The two remained silent before the god shook his head and his appearance became that of what it was before, the Roman aspect of the sun god in mortal disguise. Apollo shook his head and held it. Whoa, blacked out for a second there, did my Greek self say something emotionally stupid? Total dick, the sun god said as he pouted with crossed arms. That was super touching and he goes about that it was emotionally stupid. Dick. Naruto stared at his father with furrowed brows before shaking his head. He was still angry and with good reason. His dad had just directly disapproved of a girl and then indirectly told him to follow his heart, even if that meant being with said girl. Stupid multiple personality disorder. Hey, how do you think we feel about it? Hermes asked. He wasn't even a thief as a Roman. He was a salesman. How's about this, we agree to disagree, suggested the blonde demigod as he tried rain in his temper. It's the only way to deal with him like this, honestly, said Artemis with a huff and crossed arms. Apollo shrugged, your choice, I'm just saying there's more fish out there, and you could always catch a bigger better one to eat and enjoy. Fish analogies, really, Poseidon said as he frowned a bit. Hades and Zeus had small smiles on their faces at their brother's annoyance. Clenching his teeth Naruto decided to change the subject before he really got pissed. Why are you using that face anyway? Aside from the fact that I can chose whatever face I want, I find it easier to conduct business with a mature face rather than one of a heartthrob teenager, commented the god before he smirked and gestured to his appearance. What's the scouter say about his ego level? Hermes asked his smith brother. Over. 8,957. Bro at least do the joke right. But I guess no matter what, you just can't change the truth. I'm a sexy mofo no matter where I come from. Ah, there it is, it's over 9,052. Hephaestus said with a nod as he read the device. Hef, 
It's dead now. Stop beating it with your hammer, please. The god of travelers said with a shake of his head. Humble, too, Naruto sarcastically added before he said. I thought you'd already gone through the change a few months ago during New Year's Eve. He was changing. Asked everyone, voices laced in disbelief. It's easier to keep an eye on the biz when you're a part of it. Apollo replied with a shrug, and let's face it, I wouldn't do anything as a Greek but read porn in the office or make pornos with myself as the star. Hermes turned to his brother. It's true, isn't it? I plead the fifth. Apollo mumbled, not looking into his thieving brother's eye. Like you don't have someone to give you the hanky-panky on the side here, scoffed Naruto. And you're married now, Hera said as she frowned at her stepson, whose back straightened somewhat at the reminder. Don't compare me with my other self, Apollo said with a frown. The demigods looked surprised, so he was less womanizing in this form. His grin reappeared as he quickly added, You'll only feel worse about you. Well, that dashed some respect from the demigods. There you go again with that humble trait we all share, snarked Naruto as he sighed. Look, I didn't come here to argue over which side of you is the best, you're both equally annoying. True, the rest of the gods answered unanimously, besides Apollo of course. Traitors, McLean brought me here for a job I said I needed. And why did you say that? Apollo asked as his smile became a confused frown. I had a brief vision of McLean and his little Greek daughter appearing in front of my door, but much more clean and not as emotionally ruffled. Seems that sight needs some fine-tuning, said Aphrodite with a smirk to Sun God. Hey, visions change all the time. Who knows what happens next? The God of Prophecy countered sternly. That's partially why I said I needed a job, Naruto grunted as he pressed his two fingers to his head in an effort to stave off the coming headache. Look Phoebus. Apollo. Grind the wheel nephew, the goddess of the hunt cheered on with a large smile. Whatever. Naruto grumbled before looking up. I have to get to Camp Jupiter. Today. You think that's a good idea, Fishcake? Apollo asked, using his son's own dreaded nickname in retaliation for being called Phoebus. Naruto growled at him before shaking his head. He was letting this get too personal and he was surprised that Helios was keeping quiet for so long. Really, some comments would have been nice, Demeter said, she found them quite funny at times. Hestia frowned slightly as she continued to read, obviously disagreeing. It's what has to be done to save Bianca's life, sighed out the blonde after he shook off his aggravation. All right, well I suppose I could give you a hand, Apollo said with a shrug before smirking. But you have to audition for Theseus' role. Well, it gives my other a reason to hate him more it seems. The god of wine said with a frown. Yeah, fine, whatever, Naruto agreed readily. Can I get to Leah now and go? I don't think you understood me, Naruto, Apollo said as he leaned down slightly with a grin on his face. I meant. Audition. Now. Oh, nice. The sun god grinned. My kid on the big screen. No doubt he'll get the role. He hummed in thought. Maybe I should get this film going, too. Don't you dare, Apollo, said Dionysus with a purple face. Hey, I can do what I want with the arts, D, you got no say in them. Apollo said with a triumphant grin. You have got to be fucking kidding me, exclaimed the blonde in disbelief. Hestia pursed her lips at the use of such language after she was forced to read it. His sun-like eyes searched the slightly warmer than usual ice-blue eyes that were looking at him only to find no sign of this being a joke. Our Roman sides aren't very funny, are they? Hermes asked with a tilt of his head. Getting nods in return, it was true, they just didn't seem to have a funny bone unless they made the joke. In fact all that was within the icy ocean blues was the mirth Apollo found in the situation his son was in. Total dick but I still have to agree, Apollo said. This is funny. Naruto stormed out of the building's elevator with a slightly shocked Talia following behind him. Star struck Talia, Nico asked with an amused look upon his pale face. I'm warning you ghost boy, don't push me right now, was the stern retort from the hunter. He was livid, he was embarrassed and he was this close to flipping his shit. Oh, what did you do? Come on. Apollo wanted to know eagerly. 
Maybe that's why his portrayal of Jack Nicholson's monologue from A Few Good Men was so good it got a standing ovation. Oh, that's classic. Ares grinned along with nods all around. My kid's a beast. The god of arts cheered. And here he was trying to not get the part just despite his father's Roman aspect, when all that accomplished was doing just what he intended not to do. Sweetie, you can't help it if you're good at something. The Lady of Doves consoled the blonde within the story. That. Dot was. Amazing. Commented a familiar voice within his head. Oh. There he is. Hades smirked. And where were you? Naruto all but demanded of Helios. He could see the once faded Greek god appear in front of him with his hands raised, prompting Naruto to stop walking towards his car. Talia stopped before walking into her paused boyfriend and followed his gaze, frowning when she could see nothing. She wishes she could see double blondes, said Apollo. He grinned wolfishly at getting a sputtering retort from the hunter and a slap from his sister. Ah routines, such good comedic reels. Hey, I wasn't about to get us thrown out of what was one of our only chances of legitimately getting into the other camp, Helios defended himself before pointing at his incarnation. Your attitude didn't help any either. Yeah, he might have started a spat with Phoebus, Athena said with a smirk at the name. It was something she was going to use from now on now that she knew it would annoy the Roman god. It's not like I wanted to be annoyed, but damn he gets worse when he's in that aspect, complained the blonde. He was then elbowed in the side, ow. Talia Chan, don't hit me. Stop talking to nothing then. And why did you stop walking? Inquired the girl with narrowed eyes. Oh come on. You'd think she'd know about him talking to nothing like a crazy person, Apollo said with an eye roll. Well, the crazies are fun in their own way, said Aphrodite with a finger to her chin as she hummed in thought what that could mean. Rolling his own eyes, Naruto gestured to the slightly offended, nothing, and explained his actions. Yeah, hell's not liking that kind of talk about him. He is far from a nothing, Talia said Apollo as he playfully frowned at the lieutenant of the hunters. Helios finally decided to reveal himself and is standing there. Not for me, Talia grumbled as her arms crossed, I swear if you're making this up we're going to have issues. Like they don't already, Percy asked, or one coming up in a blonde, blue-eyed Superman. Leo added, oh, I can't wait. The goddess of love squealed in giddy. He's not. Hugh commented as he manifested between the two demigods. His eyes were squinting in Helio's direction. If you look hard enough you can see some sort of figure. And from my connection with the kit, I can hear, something. It sounds like faint whispering. So even the spirit hears voices in his head. Apollo asked with a grin. See, the spirit animal can confirm your sanity, Helios joked, getting Naruto to glare at him. You're not funny. Grumbled the blonde, I think he is, Hades said with a faint grin while his nephews were cracking up at Helio's joke. Who was thoroughly annoyed at this quest's strange turn? He looked down at the medallion in his right hand that his father had given him after doing as he was requested. Apparently it would give both him and Talia a free pass, but no more than two would be welcomed. Peacefully, that is, and that isn't ominous at all. Jason murmured. There it was again, Q commented pointing in the direction of Helios. A tiny whisper, almost, human. All right, fine, so you're not crazy, Talia said before giving her boyfriend a grin. Well, no more than usual anyway. Yeah, but me thinks you like that crazy part to him, said Percy as he grinned at the hunter, who crossed her arms with a frown on her face directed at him. Tapping the raven-haired girl on the nose, Naruto replied with a grin of his own. Yeah but that's what makes me irresistible. Talia scowled with pink cheeks at the grinning Percy. Okay, maybe his crazy had a charm to it, but not by much, nope. Not at all. Part of your charm, Talia joked with a smirk. Don't agree with the current conversation. Talia cried out in her head with dismay while her scowl deepened. Damn straight, Naruto said with a smirk of his own. Ugh, both of you go get a room, Q mocked. But be safe. Talia flushed and her cheeks burned hotly when Apollo and Aphrodite winked at her. Erg, stupid gods. All right, that's enough out of you, said the guardian as he raised his right arm where the bracelet sat. 
The ruby shone while Q dissipated back into it. His spirit animal, now cowed, Naruto pointed at the manifestation of his past life who was grinning like a loon. You too. Last thing we need is the security guards wondering why what are you smiling at? WH what was that? The two teens looked behind them to see the daughter of Tristan McLean staring in shock at where Q once hovered. And so, it has begun, Leo said in a deep voice. Piper flickered her gaze between Talia and Naruto before looking past them to something outside. Her eyes noticeably widened and she screamed while pointing at something beyond the gates of the building's parking garage. What is that? Pipes indeed, Annabeth surmised, getting pushed by the blushing child of love. Helios had vanished. Naruto and Talia turned around once again to see a giant winged serpent staring at them. A long tongue, possibly three feet in length flicked out while two snake-like eyes narrowed on them. The couple turned and shared a look of disbelief before Naruto turned to Piper. Oh, oh, he is going to be dropping major bombage on her mist-clouded head, said Hermes, who grinned impishly at the thought. I'll answer your questions after you answer mine. What are you doing down here Piper? inquired the blonde teenager while his girlfriend reached into her jacket pocket and pulled out her canister of mace. To silence her. The mechanic said in a low whisper. Leo. Dude, morbid, Nico said. He nodded and grinned. Nice one. I try. Shut up you morons, said Piper, her arms crossed as she huffed. M. Mr. Liar wanted to talk to my dad alone about a new movie idea, something about ninjas, Piper stuttered out. Hmm, well, I did marry one, so why not? The god himself asked aloud. As she stared in horror at the creature waiting beyond the gate. Why? Why is it just sitting there? What does it want? In order of your questions, Naruto began as he stepped in front of Piper and clenched his fists. That thing you saw was my pet fox. That thing out there is a dracon, Ethiopian by the wingspan. Good eye. The goddess of the hunt nodded. It can't come here because of my dad. You're welcome and it most likely wants to eat either me or my tasty girlfriend. You know, I wonder if he means eatable tastier, Aphrodite trailed off with a suggestive smile that made Talia nearly pass out at the thought since her face was so red. He sent a glare to the girl that elbowed him in the side before looking behind him at the demigoddess shaking like a leaf. Of course I would be, Piper muttered, she had every right to. He thought back to his prophecy and a smile crossed his face before chuckling with a grin. Looking forward he muttered, Three take the fire steed neither west nor east. You have been offered a spot on the quest Piper, do you accept this responsibility? Apollo asked her in a serious tone, getting eye rolls from everyone at his attempt at a joke. What? Piper and Talia asked. Naruto looked at his girlfriend with a grin. Told ya I'd meet up with my quest mates in California he said before looking at Piper. By the way, did I mention that the two of us are Greek demigods? Oh. Dot and so are you. Casual. I like it. Percy smiled. Just go out and say it. Simple as that. Piper stared at him in shock while Talia roughly punched her boyfriend in the arm. Upon getting hit, the blonde glared at her with a frown on his face. Would you stop doing that? I'm not invincible, you know. You really like to hit on him, Jason said to his sister, who flushed at the same phrasing the blonde on the screen tended to use. Shut up Jay, she said with a stern scowl on her face. Don't drop bombs like that so nonchalantly then, you idiot, scolded the daughter of Zeus. They heard a muffled thump and looked down to the unconscious form of Piper before looking at each other once again. Piper groaned with pink cheeks, she passed out. That had gotten some chuckles all around. She's so dramatic, Naruto Mok complained as he crouched down and picked the girl up in a cradling carry. And light, seriously, she's like a feather. Jason frowned at the sight while Piper flushed a bit from it. Talia rolled her eyes before jokingly asking, where do you think she gets that from? Ha ha, do you think it's alright to just leave her like this? No, we have to take her back upstairs, Naruto said, turning to the elevator. The dracon gave a bit of a roar and Naruto called over his shoulder, Oh shut up, we'll deal with you later. Wow, so causal with the smack talk, Leo said with respect. Yes, because we talk like that to all the dracons. 
The green-eyed child of the sea said dryly. As they boarded the elevator, Talia asked, So how did you know what kind of dracon that was? I like to read, remember. Naruto said before reaching over and pressing the top floor's button while still keeping Piper in his arms. Jason was frowning a bit and Leo snickered. Oh you are Jelen bro. Shut up. After doing so he looked down at the girl in amusement when she mumbled. Think she's gonna forget what we said. No, said the demigoddess in question, arms crossed. Knowing your luck, no, Talia commented with a smirk as she pocketed her disguised bronzed spear. What do you think Annie and Percy are doing right now? Probably something lame like arts and crafts, Naruto replied, unaware of how very incorrect he was. We wish, Percy and Annabeth said as one. For at that moment as the two got in the elevator, Annabeth Chase was preparing to lead her first quest, having chosen Percy and Grover to take with her as they explored the labyrinth. After getting some control over her nerves and excitement, Percy was muttering that it wasn't exciting at all. Annabeth started giving one of her fellow cabin mates instructions on how to properly care for Washington. Percy was trying to convince Tyson that he'd be fine, but the poor Cyclops was far too concerned to take his brother's word at face value. Grover, perhaps was the luckiest of the three while preparing, getting a very concerned nymph to glue herself to him as they waited for the quest to begin. And the satyr has more game than us at the time, Percy said with a chuckle, getting some laughs from his friends. Well, this is all sorts of wonderful, isn't it? Grover mumbled as they came across yet another dead end. Yes, finally some spotlight, said Percy with a grin, he was getting tired of hearing all about Naruto. It was Annabeth's first quest after all. It was her time to shine. They had only just begun their quest and the paths they had been taking were either impossible to pass or led them literally nowhere. The child of wisdom gave a frustrated sigh. It was a real pain. It truly was. The satyr had agreed to come along after hearing what little of the prophecy Annabeth was given that could allude to Pan. Of course he would, he needs to be after all. Nico said with a knowing smile. Maze doesn't want us to pass, Tyson murmured worriedly from behind the satyr, no stop changing. That'd be crazy, Tyson, Percy tried to calm his brother down with a pat on the shoulder. The concerned Cyclops came along despite Chiron's warning about the standard rule for a limit to companions. Annabeth argued that Naruto was given a quest and only took one companion, which was also frowned upon, and seeing as he couldn't divulge why Naruto had only taken one, Chiron reluctantly let it slide. Go Annie, tell him, said Talia. She grinned at the blonde that nodded in agreement. Part of me wants to pull my hair out and the other part wants to admire Daedalus' ingenuity, Annabeth commented through a grumble. Still have his designs though, said Annabeth with a bright smile. As she turned around and pushed past Percy and Tyson, come on, let's see if a new pathway opened. The four explorers of the labyrinth backtracked to where they had originally turned only to find yet another dead end. Okay, that is just freaky, Leo said, but extremely cool all at the same time. Grover and Percy both hung their heads with a groan while Tyson started to pat against the wall in worry. Annabeth huffed in frustration before turning around and pressing her back to the new wall. Sliding down, she crossed her arms over her knees and rested her head on them. It was really frustrating, said Annabeth, frowning as she recalled the difficulty of the labyrinth. Percy went to calm Tyson down before his searching became frantic while Grover took a seat next to Annabeth. You all right? The satyr asked his friend. Annabeth took a deep breath before raising her head. I really thought this was my chance to prove myself, she mumbled admittedly. A sigh escaped the blonde girl's lips before she continued, that I was ready to be a hero. Hey, you were at the time, Percy said as he smiled towards her, when she returned. Still, it was tough. The blonde sighed, under her breath, Annabeth added, just like Naruto. Oh, what's this? Aphrodite said in interest. Annabeth and Percy listened closely as well. Though with the silence in the corridor, Percy and Grover heard it just fine. Grover rubbed her shoulder in reassurance that he believed in her while Percy frowned at what she said. His brows furrowed as he recalled a conversation he and Naruto shared last winter, and what Aphrodite had told him. You know, we never really did hear what she told him, Hermes said, 
it may have not been the same thing. Percy gulped at that while Annabeth looked at him with half-lidded eyes, wanting to know now. However, that conversation with Aphrodite was not one he wanted to explain to his friends or brother for that matter, so he focused on what the older demigod had said to him. When we were looking for Artemis, he mentioned that he found you first, Percy said, getting a look of surprise from Grover while Tyson listened with interest. Oh, cool, we get to learn more about our group, Annabeth said in excitement, wanting to know what dynamic the blonde boy had played in the traveling group. Annabeth nodded and her gray eyes turned to Percy, he did. I'd probably be dead if he hadn't stumbled across me. What? Well, maybe not dead, but I don't know. Annabeth let out a sigh of relief. Of course she wouldn't die. He did most of the fighting before we met up with Talia and Luke. She gave a bitter laugh before continuing, all I did was hide. Like a coward. Annabeth frowned at that, she had to hide a lot. That's okay. Why did her other sound so bitter about it? Annabeth, you were seven years old. Grover immediately cut in before she could say anything worse about herself. The fact that you made it from California to New York, even in a group, is amazing. This is true, Artemis said with a curt nod. I not do as good on my own, Tyson admitted, giving his own opinion on the conversation, hit a lot, too. Annie very brave. You don't understand, Annabeth said with a frown to the two. The goddess of love had this knowing smile on her face at this. Oh, this was going to be good. She could just tell. Before looking ahead at the darkness of the labyrinth, Naruto never showed any fear, and when he fought, it was almost like a dance. A crazy, wild and unpredictable dance. Wow, you got a shrine to him or something? Nico asked, getting a blushing Annabeth to push him in anger. Yeah, I'll bet those clones did a lot to make it look crazy, Percy added jokingly getting a snicker from Grover. Clone spamming would be an awesome power, Leo said so much stuff could get done. He sighed along with Annabeth who readily agreed with him. He didn't use them, Annabeth interjected, making the two boys look at her in disbelief. She continued softly, he couldn't, normal people could see them. That's why he stuck with his bow. See, just a badass with a bow alone, said Apollo. He grinned in pride at his counterpart's son's skill. He didn't use his sword. Percy asked in confusion. Grover piped up before Annabeth could speak, he didn't have it, remember. QB became his sword and shield after he, died. Annabeth shivered at the last memory she had before that night, forcing it back and continuing. That must have scarred her mind a bit, said Ares, getting a look from his sister. He just shrugged in return. That's what made it even more impressive. A bow, some arrows, and a few irrational no impossible movements and he took down monsters like he'd been doing it all his life. Well, he is a trained soldier, Jason said with a nod. It was only natural that he would adapt to fighting monsters. Percy opened his mouth to speak when Grover sent him a look that made him shut up. Ooh, silenced by the goat, said Nico as he jeered at Percy, getting grumbles from the hero of Olympus. He may have known that Naruto had been training to be a soldier since he was a kid, but Annabeth didn't. She didn't get the story behind the enigmatic blonde, and Percy was sure that there was quite a bit left out of Naruto's story. Maybe one day they'd get the rest out of him. Nah, he's got the mysterious air about him. Maybe Talia would find out with some lovin'. Apollo teased suggestively, getting an approving nod from the love goddess. Talia looked like she just wanted to shoot them. Annabeth continued since Percy didn't speak up, I asked him who he thought his parent was, wondering if there was even the slightest chance that he and I had the same mother, but he surprised me when he claimed he wondered whom his father was. He could have been a son of Athena with how amazing his planning was. Both Annabeth and Athena took interest in that news. He always managed to box the monsters in, finishing it quickly, and then walking away like nothing had happened. Blonde, strategies that were efficient and effective, it screamed Athena. It really does, said Annabeth as she nodded. It would be cool to have a brother like that. And to think, he's the son of one of the most laid-back gods that exist, Grover added, getting Annabeth and Percy to nod while Tyson tilted his head in confusion. Stupid goat, the laid-back god muttered. I just want to prove that I could do what he did, 
Annabeth said after another moment of silence. And who wouldn't? Apollo asked smugly, as the group focused on her once more. Percy's heart skipped a beat at the smile she had donned. Annabeth cooed to Percy, getting him to blush. When I watched him fight, I would think to myself, that's what a real hero is like. That's going to be me, someday. Seems Annie had her own superhero to look up to, said Talia as she teased her friend with a wide smile on her face. Annabeth flushed. Well, growing up with him on the road, I would think so. And this is it. My chance and I blow it by getting us lost five minutes in. There's that positivity you're known for. Jerk. Said Annabeth with a pout directed at Nico for his commentary. Her smile had faded and she looked down at her feet once again, making Percy furrow his brow. From what he understood, Annabeth wanted to prove that she could be a hero like Naruto, and after meeting the teen and fighting alongside him after getting through the rough beginning they had. Understatement much? Hazel asked with a raised brow. Percy could understand why she wanted to do that. However, like stated before, Percy had met Naruto and he wasn't as amazing as Annabeth was making him out to be. Is that jealousy I hear Percy? Talia asked smugly, getting a growl from the water boy. She must have him on some high pedestal and was measuring herself to him all the time. Difficult to do, yes, but inspiring to try nonetheless. Athena nodded to her daughter who was a bit pink-cheeked from that statement. No wonder she was considering joining the hunters last winter. Heck, Percy would too if he had an idol like that. Well, he did train with me, so I can understand why, said Artemis with a smile directed at the child of wisdom, who had a sheepish look on her face. Another thought crossed his mind that made him gain a sinking feeling in his gut. What if Annabeth compared everyone with Naruto? Where did he rank? Would he even have a rank in comparison to the blonde demigod? Everyone turned to a sputtering Percy, who was shocked to hear that and also to a blushing Annabeth. The couple turned to one another, unsure of what to say. Percy wasn't sure if he wanted to ask or not, but thankfully he was saved from making this choice when the wall started to shift once again. Yeah, really thankful I bet, said Piper with smirk at the water boy. Percy clenched his jaw somewhat. The group stood close together when the ground started to shake and clouds of dust shot up. Once more standing on her feet, Annabeth made a realization, it's a platform. The platform is moving. Everyone hang on to something. We're on an elevator. No, said Annabeth. She knew where this was heading, and she was not looking forward to it. There was a loud hiss before the labyrinth's floor dropped the four screaming teenagers at an impressive speed. Their ride was fast and short the platform settling once more with another hiss. A large open doorway was to their right and the questing quartet all got to their feet rather quickly. All in favor of not taking that ride again, Grover asked with a groan. It looked like fun to me, Leo said. It wasn't. The wise water couple deadpanned. I, me, the other three replied with groans of their own while rubbing various portions of their body. They entered into the room hesitantly before being blown away with the strange setup. It looked like Greeks had once lived here, but had slightly changed. There was a shield with a sun engraved on it to the far right, making three of the quest takers think of a certain son of Apollo upon seeing it, but were shaken from their thoughts when a voice spoke. Can we go one scene where he isn't mentioned? Percy asked in a low tone. Jealous of the big brother, huh Percy? Talia snickered. Oh. Go make out with dear. What? Talia shouted back, but their parents stopped the scuffle before it could even happen with their throats clearing. And who is that? Someone else trying to kick me out. The four turned to what looked like the average doorman with one major difference than any other normal person. He had two faces. One faced left, the other right. The left was set in a smile while the right had a frown. Both had dark golden beards that connected with their equally golden hair. The black eyes of either face were turned in their direction when the face on the left spoke as the adjacent hand rose in a wave, hello. Welcome to my humble abode. Well, if it ain't old Two-Face himself, said Ares with a sneer to the Roman. The four were too surprised by what they saw to speak, prompting the other face to open his mouth, it figures. They're as rude as I heard they were. I feel as though he is going to be a headache, said Jason, seeing the two-faced Roman god. 
Trust me, he is, said Percy with a frown. Regaining her voice, Annabeth stepped forward and spoke, Sorry, I've, we've never seen anything like you before. Of course, you're Greek, he shouldn't even be there, said Hera. She sniffed in distaste at the two-faced clown. I'm Annabeth Chase, who are you? Ooh, wonderful, I was hoping you would show up soon, the left face said gleefully, I'm your best friend. I'm your worst enemy, the right face added with a noticeable deeper scowl on his face before they spoke in sync, I'm Janice. God of pure confusion and annoyance. Percy and Annabeth chimed together. The god of beginnings, the left cheerfully stated. The god of endings, grunted out the right face. The god of choices, the two faces said at once. We've never heard of a god like you, Percy said, getting the right face to eye him. And they shouldn't have had to, said Athena. Her face was set in a frown at the thought. I should figure you hadn't, Janice right face grumbled, but I've heard of you, Percy Jackson. Who hasn't? Joked the left face. The son of N, Poseidon, Janice left face cheerfully interrupted the right. Please, blow the cover of the two societies, by all means, said Apollo with a roll of his eyes. Whatever, Janice right face grunted before pointing at Percy, you've made many choices. The choice to study alone after my brother offered his aid. Yeah Percy, Naruto goes to all the trouble to help you, but you just throw it away, Leo said with a shake of his head, but his smile gave him away. The choice to leave your mother behind on the quest for the master bolt, and others that I don't approve of. Percy just gave him the middle finger, not caring at all if it was disrespectful. Ah, but he did make choices that stopped the rising of the crooked one multiple times, the left face of Janus chimed in, but enough about him. Let's look at the leader, the daughter of Athena. Both faces eyes locked on Annabeth, and she was forced to choose to look at one of them. Choosing the left, as it was the most welcoming and somewhat familiar. Cause of Naruto is why, said Apollo, letting a few snickers out and making Annabeth throw him a glare as she blushed. She asked, what do you want with me? I want you to make a choice, of course, silly girl, Janice said with his smile widening. He gestured behind him, to two doors, and continued while holding his other hand up, behind me are two doors. One on the left, one on the right, both will lead you out of the labyrinth and back on track. In my hand is a key. It will work in either door, but can only be used once. Okay. Sounds legit, said Frank, again. Wait for it, Percy said with a finger in the air. I have to choose one of the doors. Annabeth asked, is that all? That's all. Right or left? Make a choice, urged Janice. The blonde daughter of Athena took the key and looked at either door. There has to be more than just a left or right door, but what could it be? Annabeth asked herself. There it is, said the son of the sea. A troubling thought then crossed her mind and she looked to Percy, could it mean? What are you waiting for? Janice's right face interrupted her thoughts with a frown, choose. It's not that hard. Of course it is, Annabeth said as she frowned sadly. I don't know which one to pick, Annabeth retorted. Janice's right face scowled deeper while the left face's smile fell slightly. Choose, insisted the god. I, I, Annabeth stuttered out, bringing the key closer to her chest as she stepped back from the minor god. That is enough, Janice, a stern voice said. Hera smiled, time for her to shine. Janice as well as the questing campers all turned to face the speaker, a woman, tall and beautiful. She was dressed in a white dress that flowed like oil on water as she gracefully approached the stunned god. Her long chocolate brown hair was woven into a braid and gold ribbons woven within it. Brown eyes filled with disapproval had locked on Janice, making the god's dual faces swallow. Little man knows when the old lady comes in, said Ares. He snickered at his own joke, but zipped up when his mother gave him a stern glare for the old lady line. You are not welcome here, Janice. Leave, commanded the elegant woman. Janice had vanished faster than Percy had thought possible, disappearing as though he were never there. He's got his daddy's running skills. Ares jeered, getting a sun-filled glare from Apollo. The woman sighed and turned her gaze back on the four teenagers. Immediately, Grover fell to his knee and bowed his head, murmuring under his breath several prayers. 
Tyson became very shy and looked away, unable to gaze upon her with his eye, leaving only a very surprised Annabeth and a slightly confused Percy to be the only two looking at her. Seriously, you just saw her at Christmas, Hermes said. I mean, she voted for you to be killed. H. Hera, Annabeth stuttered out making Percy look at her and then back at the woman before he remembered why she looked so familiar. The son of Poseidon's face fell into a frown as he recalled their last meeting. Well, methinks this may be awkward, said Hephaestus with a chuckle. Annabeth Chase, greeted the Queen of Olympus before she nodded to Percy, Perseus Jackson. Percy, corrected the teen out of habit. He then asked rudely, why are you here? Hera frowned a bit, but then again, her other called for his death just to have her stepdaughter killed. So his rudeness was expected sadly. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Grover snapped out of worry before he bowed his head once more. You may stand, Grover Underwood, Hera said to the satyr before she once more looked at the demigod. I am here to help you, Percy Jackson. Is that good enough a reason? Forgive me if I don't believe you, Percy deadpan. You wanted me dead last time I saw you. There's that awkward moment, the smith god said with a rough laugh. Hera frowned, not you particularly, but the other one could have been killed. Oh, how kind of you. Talia spat out with sarcasm lacing her words. It was nothing personal. Bullshit, Poseidon said to his sister. Hera simmered a bit to her brother's comment. Seemed pretty personal to me, mumbled the teen. See, the sea god pointed out further, getting an annoyed look from his sister. But before anything could come of it, Annabeth spoke up, why are you helping us? Maybe I just feel like it. Maybe I have something to gain from it. Or maybe, the Queen of Olympus continued with a small smile, I wanted to see you succeed, Annabeth Chase. No she didn't, Annabeth thought sourly at what the goddess really wanted, with much distaste. While Hera was assisting the questing quartet through the labyrinth, Naruto was preparing an arrow. After they had gone back upstairs, Tristan agreed that it was all right for Piper to join them, on their way to the summer camp. Man, where's my entrance? Leo asked. He pouted. Seriously, how long was it going to be until he's in the story? Be patient Leo, you'll come in. How? I don't know, but I'm sure you will soon, said Jason with a thinking look on his face. Easy for you to say, you'll get some cool entrance I bet. The son of the smith pouted further. Apparently, Liar, had told him that's where they were heading and Tristan wanted his daughter to make more friends. Yeah, a nice tall blonde friend, Leo said suggestively, getting a blushing Piper and Jason. Perhaps nipping her shoplifting in the bud before anything worse could happen. Not my fault, said movie star's daughter shouted in a whiny tone. So, confused and concerned, Naruto and Talia resumed their original destination, though Talia did ask what Tristan meant by a summer camp, only for Naruto to cut her off by promising to explain later. It's always later with him, said Talia with a frown. Well, it is a delicate situation, said Hestia, looking up briefly from the book to add her own two cents. I swear to Rhea, whiskers, Talia said after rejoining him near the gates of the parking garage. She's going to flip out if she wakes up in our car. Damn right I will, said Piper, assuring the statement with a solid nod. With how she was asking questions before. Not a chance, Naruto said with a chuckle, and you said it yourself, with my luck she'll remember what I told her. This is going to be interesting, I can feel it, Piper said with a shake of her head, also maybe a headache for her other. Who knows? The dracon roared once more making the couple look at it with frowns on their faces. Talia prepared her spear and shield once more while Naruto knocked his arrow. The arrowhead split into two prongs as soon as he released the string. It flew fast and true, striking the dracon in the snout as it looked down at them. Oh, nose shot, said Ares, a deep chuckle following his comment. Ain't that cruel of him? Roaring in pain, the flying serpent took to the skies and flew away making the teens share a confused glance before looking back at the dracon as it fled. Pansy, said the war god. He frowned, no fight. Boring. That's not normal, Naruto said in a murmur as his brows furrowed in thought, why was it here if not to fight? 
Maybe it thought that we would just ignore it. Talia suggested, easy prey. Even dracons are not that foolish. Artemis said as she frowned, getting Talia to nod in agreement. No, disagreed the blonde, the crooked one knows our faces too well and drakes aren't stupid by any means. Artemis smiled, good to see that her nephew noticed as well. His eyes suddenly widened and a hand went to his head with a loud smack. Groaning he put his bow away and abruptly grabbed Talia's wrist before turning around back towards his car. Talia didn't have a chance to resist, running after him in order to avoid being dragged, whiskers. What is it? I'm an idiot, that's what. Naruto said back to her before opening the passenger door and pushing Talia towards it, get in. We have to catch that dracon. L.A. chase scene. The sun god asked in excitement. Oh yeah, Hermes grinned with him. The daughter of Zeus scrambled in the car while Naruto abused his horizon to appear within it, pulling his seatbelt on while Talia shut her door. Before his girlfriend could ask what was going on, Naruto started the engine and peeled out of the parking spot, causing Talia to reach up and brace her hand against the roof of the car. Glaring at him, Talia warned, you'd better not pull another stunt like you did earlier. Now that is just setting him up for it, said Hermes. I make no promises, Naruto said as his challenger sped out of the parking garage. His eyes narrowed as he relocated the flying serpent, bingo. Wanna do me a favor? If you even say what I think you're going to say, I'm going to kill you, Talia spat. Wow Talia, just wow, Annabeth said, jumping to conclusions much, in this kind of situation. Shut up. The hunter stammered quickly out, her cheeks pink. Roll down your window, he said, catching her off guard. See, the child of wisdom smiled in amusement, getting the hunter to grumble. Oh, right, Talia did as he requested, before looking back at her boyfriend with confusion on her face, don't you have a button that does that? Hands at ten and two, Apollo recited, didn't they change that, Annabeth asked, getting some looks. What? I studied for my permit. Needed a hand for this, Naruto said as he held his pad full of seals. Finding the one he wanted, he gave the pad to Talia and said, rip that out. Carefully. Ah, more of the seal art, said Athena with interest, wanting a more detailed explanation. Seriously, this book gave the bare basics and it did nothing to sat her curiosity. How am I supposed to be careful when you're driving like a maniac? The raven-haired girl asked him. His father's work sadly, Talia. Artemis teased lightly to both her hunter and brother. Getting no response, she huffed and grabbed the top of the page before slowly ripping it out of place. Once she finished, Talia closed the pad and offered her boyfriend the piece of paper, now what? My kanai case is on your duffel's side pocket, Naruto said as he made a hard right turn, earning himself a loud blare of a horn get one of them and wrap that around the handle. You do realize that having a window open isn't helpful, right? Talia asked. Impulse action, happens to the best of us, Percy said in minor defense of the blonde on the screen. You mean Percy action mode? Annabeth asked slyly to him. That was uncalled for, before turning around and reaching for her duffel bag. Finding said pocket, Talia opened it and then swiveled her head around to glare at him. Why the hell are your knives with my underwear? Oh I swear, Ares does that all the time, Aphrodite complained. Come on, babe, it happens. The war god countered weakly. I thought that was your pajama pocket. Naruto said before a grin crossed his face as he realized what that meant. Wait, you mean they actually made women boxers? That's sexy, and also very different than what you normally we ow. Oh ho, the love goddess cheered. Second base so far, she asked Talia, getting a scathing glare in return. He was kicked in the shoulder before the comment could be finished. You show him girl, Talia nodded sternly to her other. Talia had just grabbed a knife when Piper started to wake up. Her kaleidoscopic eyes blinked several times before she focused on a grumbling Talia and felt herself moving at a fast rate. Slowly sitting up, Piper looked outside to the blurs before looking forward seeing the still grinning Naruto at the driver's seat. Her gaze went to the creature that was flying away from them and she said, it wasn't a dream. Red pill or blue pill? Leo asked, getting a huff from Piper. Oh, hey, 
You're up. Naruto said before looking at Talia as she settled back into her seat. Now when you wrap it, use the torn side first. All right, now what? Talia asked as she completed the task. Piper wanted to ask what was going on, but was suddenly cowed into silence as Naruto narrowly avoided driving right into an oncoming truck. You know, with our ADHD, could we be good race car drivers? Leo asked, getting thoughtful looks from the other demigods. Naruto then turned down a not as busy street, following the flying dracon as best as he could before it turned left where he couldn't. When I say so, throw it as hard as you can out your window, instructed her boyfriend before he made a hard left. As he drove down an abandoned alleyway, the blonde teen looked up in the rearview mirror with a twinkle in his unique eyes, better buckle up, Piper. Now he says that, grumbled the girl in question. The girl did so as fast as she could. She had good reason to, as Naruto immediately pulled on the emergency brake and turned the wheel to the left once more when they came out of the alleyway, putting them just behind of the dracon. The flying serpent pulled its wings back with a loud hiss as it tried to make a rapid turn. Naruto floored it and followed as close as he could. Okay, he is good at pursuit, got to give him that much. Apollo said, getting his sister to nod in smiling agreement. Now, Talia Chan. The blonde exclaimed once he was right alongside it. Talia leaned out of her open window, the blowing wind ignoring her as though she were a part of it, before pulling her right arm back and chucking the weapon at the monster. The kanai cut through the air, piercing the hide of the dracon like it was nothing. Hey, that was a good throw. Jason complimented, getting his sister to smirk, but she was slightly confused since she didn't even know how to that until she joined up with the hunters. The monster released a slight roar of pain but flew on, vanishing into the clouds. Naruto grinned in victory before looking at his girlfriend after she climbed back in. You've successfully just placed your first tracker, Talia Chan, he congratulated, way to go. That slip of paper acts like a tracker, Athena asked. Okay, seriously, that stuff is putting tech out of use. Glad only he can do it, Leo grumbled a bit. So are we going to follow it now? Talia asked. Naruto shook his head. No, we don't have time, the blonde said, much to her confusion. He smiled at her before looking forward as he drove, I'll explain on the way. For now, we should really get to our destination. Which is, Talia pride, Piper listening in out of curiosity. Camp Jupiter, Naruto said after a moment of silence, getting a displeased rumble of thunder from the sky. Someone's moody, Hades muttered loudly. Rolling his window down, Naruto shouted back, Hey, she's your daughter. You wanna argue with yourself? Didn't think so. Zeus bristled at that remark, a frown on his face. Looking in the rearview mirror, Naruto asked their other passenger, So how was your nap? It wasn't voluntary at all, said a flushed piper. She crossed her arms and mentally grumbled stupid handsome son boy. You're demigods. Dot and that was a dragon, Piper stated, before slapping her cheeks, this has to be a dream, wake up, wake up. Denial is such an ugly thing, Naruto sighed out. Piper felt anger at that comment and groaned, great, her mother's blood was getting the better of her. As he looked at his girlfriend, anything else you want to ask? What's Camp Jupiter? Talia immediately asked, only for a bolt of lightning to fly down and strike near them, what the hell was that? Talia turned to her father. Really? She asked indignantly. We kept them separated for a reason, was the stern answer back. How his grandson even got there was surprising on its own. That was Rai Gigi trying to keep you away from the other camp, answered Naruto with a frown, I knew you shouldn't have come, damn prophecies. Prophecy? What you mean like one of those horoscope things? Piper asked from the back. Hey, Apollo cried out in offense. Don't confuse the job with the side gig. Having given up on trying to wake herself up. See, Piper said, I just need a few seconds to adjust. Naruto looked at her from the rearview mirror with an arched brow. Close, Naruto said before he started to explain what a prophecy was. He then went on to answer as many questions that he could about the whole situation, save for the usual, who's my mother, question that popped up. Talia had to interject to save her boyfriend's hide, 
explaining that only the gods could claim who their child was. But he already knows, said the charm speaker with a frown, crossing her arms. Except for the D'Angelos, who were special cases since Naruto was sent personally to protect them from danger. This led to her asking why the D'Angelos weren't with them, and Naruto explained that they were too inexperienced to go on a quest with him. Not that inexperienced, said Nico as he pouted a bit, and that one of them was ill with a disease no one had ever seen before. And that reminder dampened Nico's spirits with a heavy sigh. The whole conversation took just long enough for the group to come up on a gas station just a few minutes outside of Caldecott Tunnel, where Naruto said they'd have to walk through. Oh this is going to be good, said the Lady of Doves. Finally, the coming drama of their relationship. Talia frowned, let's see how her other reacts to her boyfriend's secrets. Namely, her little brother still being alive. Do we really have to walk? Talia asked as Naruto locked his car before slapping another one of his seals on it. Piper, noticing the strange ink as it shone, asked, what's that? Yes, Talia Chan, we have to walk, Naruto said as he sealed away Talia's and Piper's bags, and that, Piper, was an avoidance seal. The seal makes the eyes of any mortals glance over it like it was never there. Athena frowned more like pouted, not that she would admit it once more. What was the range these seals could go? It seemed that they had many uses. What I just did was put your bags in a pocket dimension seal, something I should have done in the beginning. How? Piper asked. Naruto grinned and tapped the side of his nose. Secret, he said, making the girl pout angrily. Curious little thing you are, the mother of the girl giggled, getting Piper to smile at the compliment. Talia rolled her eyes at her boyfriend's antics, but smiled nonetheless at the two of them interacting like siblings as they started their journey on foot. The thought made her think of Annabeth, wondering how the precious brain of their original group was doing. Oh, you know, doing my own quest. Thanks for sticking around for that by the way, Annabeth joked, getting a sheepish look from Talia. Or if Percy had made a move yet. No, said the room, minus Percy. Knowing how he was, Talia wouldn't be surprised if Annabeth had to be the one that made the first move. Yes, said the room, this time minus a blushing Percy and Annabeth. Her thoughts then went to Jason, the little brother she lost so long ago. Talia frowned, Jason seeing this took her hand for support. The hunter turned and smiled at him. They knew where they were now, and that was all that mattered. She missed him every day and still wondered what had happened to him. Pushing the painfully happy memories of her little brother away, Talia snapped out of her trance when Naruto interlaced his fingers with hers. The blonde's unique sun-like eyes had looked at her in worry and she gave him a small smile as her hand squeezed around his. That got some cooing from the audience and a slight smile out of Talia, it was a sweet moment. Talia could mope later, right now she should focus on the quest her boyfriend was on. It would help take her mind off of those sorts of things, anyway. Not really with where you're going, said Talia softly. She wondered if this really would ruin her other's relationship. Unbeknownst to any of the three demigods, a pair of dark eyes narrowed before the owner of said eyes raised a finger to their collar, target found. Initiating pursuit. Oh, I see Waldo, said Apollo with playful childlike excitement. No, those seem to be ninjas. Wondered where those idiots went to, said Ares as he sneered at the image. Chapter End